everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm with some friends from Terrific Tigers, and I'm basically going to be starting a series where I give dressage tutorials. Now, these moves are going to be from the dressage dictionary, but I'm going to be explaining some things and applying uh, rules from Terrific Tigers because Terrific Tigers does semi-realistic dressage, which is just a little bit different. So today's lesson is just going to be the uh, basics and some beginner moves, and then I'll do an intermediate video, an advanced video, and so on. So that's definitely going to be fun. Um, we're going to be starting with the gaps. So in dressage, um, we use things called gaps, and the reason we use gaps is because there's something called screen delay, which causes you to look one horse ahead on your screen compared to other people's screens. So as an example, if I'm standing right here on my screen, on everyone else's screen, I'm going to be all the way back here. And in dressage, because our goal is to have everything look really nice and satisfying, we all want to have equal gaps. So there are three main types of gaps that I'll be going over in this video. The first type of gap is called nose to tail gap, which is what everyone is in right now. And that is when your horse's nose is hovering right above the horse in front of you's tail bow. And this type of gap is mainly used in walk or a halt because we are, you know, semi-realistic, and even if we weren't semi-realistic, we wouldn't want to completely crush other horses. The next type of gap is called OT gap, or overlap tail, and the reason it is overlap tail is because you want your horse's front hooves to be inside the horse in front of you's back hooves, and that way your horse's chest is going to be overlapping the tail. So that is why it's called overlap tail, and this type of gap is used mostly in a trot or a circle. But terrific tigers, we don't actually use OT gaps, we use a type of gap called boss gaps, and boss stands for back of saddle. That is when you want your horse's nose to be touching the back of the horse in front of you's saddle. So just like I am right now. Like that. That's also used in a trot or a circle. The final type of gap is called HI gap, and HI stands for halfway inside. That is used during a canter most of the time. That is when you want the front of your saddle to be touching the back of the horse in front of you saddle. So just like this. Those are gaps to get around screen delay, and when you're doing dressage, you want to stay in those types of gaps at all times. You can change your gait um, if you notice that you're falling behind or you're too much in front, but we recommend that you cut off your corners or your turns, like your curves instead, because we want your changes to be as unnoticeable as possible. And before we get started, the number one rule in dressage is to go on go. Because of screen delay, not only does it make you look one horse ahead when you are in a single file line, it also makes you appear to be slower and like go, you're going later on other people's screens. So when we do moves, they're usually called with a go, and when you hear that go, you want to be the first person on your screen to do the move. Alright, let's warm up and trot set trot set go and the reason you want to be the first person on your screen to be doing the move is because on other people's screens you're going to be looking in time so right now everyone should be in boss gaps and if you see me i'm currently trying to watch myself to make sure that i am in those gaps and you can cut off your corner a little bit here to adjust into those gaps and as you will notice, right here, the riders are not going right up to the wall. On these walls, we want to be um, a whole horse away from the wall, because if we were right up against the wall, that would increase our chances of crashing on accident, which we don't want to happen. And right here, 
you'll notice that our riders are riding like right beside the bright line on the ground instead of right next to the wall and that is because we want to make the arena even but on all the other walls we want to be one horse away from the wall when we ride on like this set of dotted lines right beside the bright line we call that table spacings if you notice that you're like just a tiny bit in front you don't want to slow down you can also use the corner to your advantage if your corner is coming up so for example i'm going to wait a tiny bit later to cut that corner off and if i'm just a tiny bit ahead I'm going to shuffle back and forth, just press my side arrows or your A and D keys, that'll slow you down just a little bit. And then that's perfect. So you want to stay in boss gaps. Alright, so we're going to do the first move, which is a curl. Um, a curl is a full individual circle, so it looks something like this. Curl set, curl set, and go! Perfect. All right, so as you can see, all the riders were in time, and it's just a full circle. And then you return to your original track. Let me show you what that looks like in the line, and you're going to see how I'm going to be earlier than all the other riders. And curl set, curl set, go! See, if you're early on your screen, on other people's screens, it's going to be on time. The next move is a curl over. A curl over is just half a curl. So you're going to do a little U-turn and you're going to end up heading the opposite way off the original track of where you started. Let's see what that looks like. And a curl over is when every single person does that U-turn at the same time on the same go. So curl over set, curl over set, go! As you can see, they're now um, headed the opposite way. Curl over set, go! Now that we know what a curl over is, our next move is called a bear. A bear is a curl over, but it's a more like teardrop shape where you're going to return to the original axis. So bear set, bear set, go! You're going to do a little slant, and you're going to return to your original line. Just like that. I'll do an individual example for you here. You're going to do that, and slant back onto the line. Bear set, go! Bear, set, go! The next move is called a belt, and a belt is when the leader of the line is going to do a curl over, which is half a curl, and everyone else behind them in the line is going to follow. Belt at the wall. As you can see, Aries is going to do a curl over, and everyone in the line is going to follow. Aries is going to do another belt. But that is a belt. The next move is a B curl. So a B curl is a trot curl into a canter curl, and for a B curl, um, because it is a transition move, which means it goes from one gate to the other, you want to hold down your curling key, and then on the second go, you're just going to tap your transition key to finish your second curl in the canter. If the go is called late, then you're going to continue going straight. So that is what we say, um, it's if late, go straight. So for example, if I call a first go for the B curl, and then I don't call the second go, keep going straight. B 
B curl set, so that's trot, canter, go, and go. And something that we terrific tigers do is we actually count our strides during the canter curl just to make it even more precise. So in the canter curl, we want to count our strides. Stride is every time your front hooves are going to hit the ground. And we actually count to six. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we slow right back down to a trot. We tap down after that sixth stride. And it just helps make everything more accurate. B, curl, set, go. And go. And as you can see here, they are one horse away from the wall. I want to explain something really quick called the butterfly effect. The butterfly effect is the exact reason why we prefer that you cut off your corners instead of cantering because look what happens if, um, especially if you're like early on in the line and you canter because everyone else has to canter as well. See, if Aries canters, then Rav has to canter, then Coco has to canter, and then Haffy also has to canter. And that's not very pretty, especially when you are in a bigger line. The next move is a comb. A comb is an individual cut in the certain direction. So before we learn a comb, though, we have to learn what a cut is. A cut is when the lead of the line does a 90 degree turn and ends up going towards the opposite side of the arena. So Aries, when you reach E, you're going to cut to B. And if you see this dotted line that you see on the ground right here, we actually call that the midline. So a comb is an individual cut, and that means that on go, every single rider in the line will cut towards the uh, opposite side of the arena. Comb set go as you can see that results in everyone going side by side just like that and while you do your comb you want to make sure that you are following a line on the arena ground to make sure that you are as straight as possible so it looks nice and that you are not drifting since when we are in a comb we are side by side instead of single file where where we are like one behind the other we have to figure out a way to align to, and we want to be perfectly side by side, like you just saw when they did the comb. And what we do to make sure that we are aligned is we do something called comb align. So comb align is when you are going to be one horse ahead of the line leader. If I am trotting in the comb while I'm aligned like this on the commander screen, I'm going to be right here and that would be perfect because we would all be aligned and make sure that everyone is aligning to the line leader not the person beside them we're going to trot set and you're going to see what comb align looks like trot set go and comb align to aries as you can see here they are nicely side by side The next move is a triple curl. A triple curl is a walk curl, trot curl, and canter curl. I personally like to call them with separate goes for every transition, although some commanders don't call it with uh, multiple goes, they just call it with one go, and then they expect their riders to switch to a different gate when they reach a certain spot, but I personally like to call it with multiple goes because I feel like it allows the rider to be more confident knowing exactly when to transition. Again, that is a walk, trot, and then a canter curl. Triple curl set. Go. And go. And go <laughs> imagine coco triple curl set go and go and
and go. So the next move we're going to do is a delayed triple curl. So that is still a triple curl, walk, trot, canter, but each go is going to be a few steps after completing the curls to give it the delayed effect. A delayed triple curl set. Go! And they're just going to keep going straight afterwards. Go! And go. After you do your curl, you're going to continue going forward in the same gait. Go. They're going to continue forwards in a walk. And go. Now they're going to trot. And go. And go. And go. The next move is a dodge. And a dodge is when you're going to curl over the direction called, and then you're going to curl over in the opposite direction. In my opinion, dodge can be a pretty hard move, especially for beginners, so I'll show you guys what it looks like from an individual perspective. So dodge left, set, go, I would curl over left, and go, I would curl over right. And keep heading straight, just like that. And if I was going to do a dodge right, it would look like this. Dodge right, set, Go, curl over right, and go, curl over left. Dodge, set, go, and go. Dodge, right, set, go, and go. Just like that. So if I call it dodge right, they're going to curl over right and then curl over left. It results in you going the same direction, just a little bit off of your original track. Okay, the next move is a fate. A fate is when you curl one way and then you curl the other way right after you complete the first curl. Some commanders have their riders do the second curl as soon as they are straight, but I personally call it with two goes because I like it to be more accurate. So on the first go, they're going to curl the direction called. For example, if it was a fate left, everyone would curl left on the first go, and then on the second go, they would curl the opposite direction, which would be right. So a fate would look like this. I'll do a demo. So on the first go, curl the first direction, and on the second go, you're going to curl the opposite direction. In dressage, you want to be as straight as possible, so you should be directly behind the leader. Fate left, set, go! And... Go! Fate right set, go, and go. So now I'm going to be talking about numbers. 
in dressage, everyone is going to have a quote-unquote number, and some people use odd or even, and some people use ones and twos. I personally like to use odds and evens, and your number is going to alternate all the way down the line. So for example, Aries, you're in odd, Rav, you're in even, Coco, you're in odd, and Anachka, you are in even. And then it would go odd, even, odd, even, odd, even, all the way down the line. And you might be asking, Well, why do we need numbers? Numbers tell us the direction that we go during certain moves. So the next move that we're actually going to do is called a wave. A wave is when odds are going to curl left and evens are going to curl right. Of course, some commanders have directions that they specify, such as wave left and wave right. And when commanders do that, it's always the odds that would go the specific direction and evens would go the opposite. For example, if it was a wave right, then odds go right because it's the direction in the move called and then evens would go left. Terrific Tigers just calls a wave, and for us, odds just always go left and evens always go right. Wave set, go! Wave set, go! Notice how they're all on time too. So quirky. The next move also requires our odds and evens, and the next move is called a feather. So a feather is when you're in a cut mid or a cut center line. That is when you're going to wave comb away from the axis. So odds are going to go one direction and evens go the opposite. Again, in Terrific Tigers, we don't really specify a direction. We just say feather, and when we don't specify a direction, the defaults are always odds left, evens right. Feather set, go! Of course, here you still want to be comb aligned. The next move is actually perfect for when we are in split lines, but it's a merge. So you're going to merge at B. And in a merge, um, it's pretty self-explanatory. You're just going to join back into the line. This is done to create one whole line again after you split. Make sure you are merging odd, even, odd, even, and canter up to merge into your gaps if you need to. After you merge, of course, you got to go back into the your original move gaps. is yet another transition move, and it's an eye curl. So just a walk curl and then a trot curl. Eye curl set, go. And go. So when you're doing a transition move, such as the eye curl, the instructor should call the second go for the transition before you finish your first curl. So in that case, you want to go right into the second curl and not like make it super choppy. So for example, you want it to look like this, and you, tr you want a smooth transition, and you want to keep going, and you don't want it to look like this. You don't want it to be like that. You want it to be smooth. Okay, anyways, the next move we're going to be doing is a keyhole. A keyhole is three quarters of a curl, and it results in a comb the opposite direction that you curled. For example, it looks something like this. So if I was going to do a keyhole left, I would do three quarters of a curl left and end up combing right. And if I was going to do a keyhole right, it would be like this, three quarters of a curl, and I'd end up combing left. 
Let's see how that looks like in a line. Keyhole left, set, go. Just like that. And they would make sure that they are following lines on the arena ground and comb aligning at the same time. Keyhole right, keyhole right, go. Keyhole left, set, and go. Keyhole right, set, keyhole right, set, go. Okay, the next move is a retreat curl. A retreat curl is a curl and then a curl over in the same direction. So if I was doing it individually, it would look like this. I would do a curl, I would not let go of that curl button, and I would continue going. It's basically a curl and a half, and you would end up going the opposite direction. So I'll do that again. It is a curl, and then a curl over. Retreat, curl, set, go. And there's only one go called for this. They're just gonna continue. And retreat, curl, right, set, retreat, curl, right, set, go. Stem. A stem is when someone in the line curls over and then curls over again once they reach the back of the line. Stem left set, go. So Rav is going to curl over and then curl over again automatically. Stem set for halfy, go. And she's going to curl over again. Okay, so the next move is called thread. Thread does involve numbers, so a thread is when odds will curl on the first go and evens will curl on the second go. Thread set, go, and go. It looks just like that. They're making little circles with each other and the evens keep moving straight ahead until their go is called. Thread set, Go, and go. Awesome. All right, we have five moves left. A twist is a fate wave, which means that odds would fate left and evens would fate right. There would be two goes that apply to everyone, but odds and evens would just be going in different directions. Twist set, go and go twist set go and go so the next move is a waterfall or a belt wave I believe you've heard the term wave quite a lot now, and it just generally refers to odds all going one direction and evens going the other direction. So in this case, waterfall is a belt wave, and it actually kind of looks like a waterfall. Waterfall at the wall, so odds are going to belt left and evens are going to belt right by default. Waterfall at the wall. Watch this. It does look like a waterfall, how the water is just kind of spilling. A waterfall, I believe, is usually called at a wall, but it can be called on go. So waterfall set, waterfall set, go. It's basically the same thing. It's almost like it's called at a wall, but you're just calling it <laughs> earlier. And rear set, rear set, go. That was perfect. So that is a rear set, what you just saw. It can also be called X, where on go, everyone will press X to rear as soon as they hear go. 
thank you guys so much for watching this video and of course thanks to Hilly Dark Wolf, Violet, Violet, I can't see your username, stop, Violet Peace Cord, um, oh, Ford, Anechka Steel Flight, thank you to you three, as well as Brooke Evening Shovel, and I'm sorry, who, oh, Aries, Cherries, Aries Swift Right, Emily Swift Right, oh my god, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Anyways, thank you to everyone who helped me film this video. I hope that I was able to teach you, and if you have any questions, of course, the comment section and stuff are still available. I should be completing this uh, tutorial series sometime. So thank you for watching, and I will see you all next time. Bye! Yeah, you should like and subscribe. Imagine happy. All right. <laughs> Bye!